Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's been three long weeks here at SRA. Welcome back to the best racing in North America, home of the SRA GT3 Team Series. 60 minutes of action-packed door-to-door -door racing, six divisions, six different championships on the line. Let's get ready for some action tonight. An incident oh. turn. We have Boardman at a yellow. It looks like he's dropping down positions there. The Shikin has a bunch of cars are coming through. Byron's gonna take a dive in the Lexus. Johnson looking to go down the inside of Maxwell. And we're off and away for SRA. Good evening, SRA fans. It's Austin, and I'll be your host tonight, joined by John Donahue. Uh oh. Hang on. Making sure that we can hear you, because for some reason, Discord is not populating for me. I will work on that as we go into the track map. I will walk through that. We are going to be at Spa tonight, located in Belgium. It is 7.004 kilometers, or 4.353 miles. 20 turns of maddening descent and ascent through the wonderful forest. A lot of these drivers will have a lot of different challenges. Um, o Rouge and Radion going to be one of the main ones line, for a lot of drivers, uh, along with that whole Sector 2, which hosts almost all the turns that you could possibly imagine in uh, this, this track. I definitely see a lot of overtaking happening into the bus stop, which is 19 and 20, uh, turn 7 into 9, and then potentially into 13, 14, 15, and 16, that kind of grouping right there. What about you, John? Try to do overtakes through Orouge and Radion. Hopefully, we don't see too much of that today because it doesn't usually end very well. Um, a really great spot that I noticed yesterday was um, turn one. I don't know if you mentioned that one, but turn one, usually very good spot. Uh, we'll see what happens as we get to the final sector. Yeah, I agree that that will be a uh, hot opportunity for some of these drivers. And then if they do end up going side by side they're playing that fun game of chicken up into eau rouge and ratty on there but uh, enough of the track let's get into the standings as i know i hear the drivers starting to go off qualifying now yes we oh. have passed that one minute mark so silver streak in the track yeah looking at it you'll notice that there is some change based off of what happened last week as you all know douglas mitchell did take home the win but after some stewarding calls has been relegated to p3 so that promoted aaron anderson and dahi up into first so they now hold that one two spot then we have dustin fickert and david funk rounding up your top five and then we'll go to uh, page two here as you see that we finish out the last of the 38 drivers that we had last week i'm expecting the list to fill out a little bit more as the uh, season progresses. I know that the division has 42 drivers, so we did miss a couple last week. And then moving on to the team standings, you have Douglas Mitchell and Jared Secombe. That might be Secom. Oh, Se Secom, thank you. Uh, with To the Moon sitting in first place after uh, Doug having that top three finish. And then you have Start Your Systems, Prancing Horse of Aaron Anderson and Matt Anastasi. Planet Express with Dustin Fickert and Fire Queso. Atomic Racing of Dehi Yutn and Landshark. And then Ghost Rider Racing of Closed Fist of Taylor Molino and Dan Rebel. Well, 
It's going to be a spicy season for sure. I'm going to get on board here with some of these drivers as they're starting to round the track Last to get here. So I'm in the picture in picture we're on board with Matt Anastasi, who's the first driver to be putting in or coming at least up to the line. I don't know about putting in a valid lap yet. We'll see how it goes. But uh, he's coming around and he's crossing the line now. So hold him up since he is the first one and you are also on board. We'll see how he goes through uh, goes through all this. I know the Ferrari and D4 at least struggled to go through El Rouge and Radion flat out. So we'll see how uh, some of these drivers do tonight because it is literally just a Ferrari show in D3 with a couple extra cars thrown in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know last night I had a ton of fun because as a Porsche driver, I was like, I'm catching the Ferraris on the straight because they had to lift through Origin oh, Radion. Oh, yeah. I was able to take it flat out. <laughs> it saved me a couple of spots as well because I was being gained on uh, out of the exit of, of uh, the first corner. And then they couldn't go flat, but I was just put to the firewall, gone. And it's just like, ha-ha, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing, that feeling. It's a Porsche driver. You're like, oh my gosh, I have a straight line speed over a Ferrari. <laughs> then it's short-lived it because the next track we go to is Watkins Glen. But it's in the rain. Oh. And we're good in the rain. Yeah. Uh, who are you seeing tonight that you think is going to be a uh, standout driver? I know I have a couple drivers in mind. Well, obviously you got to say at least the track on race track winner uh, from last week, Doug. Look for him to come back and try and get an, a win overall. But since he's in the Ferrari, it may be a little oh, hard because, you know, we were talking about going through Eau Rouge. There's a couple of other spots on the track I saw Ferraris having issues with. So you never know. But I know he'll probably be aiming for a win so he can say that he actually did get it for sure this time. I uh, agree. Silver. For gold, I'm going to say Dehi. Day he is looking strong. Um, I know there's a couple other drivers that I am looking at, like Fire Queso is another one of them. Uh, David Funk is another driver I'm looking at tonight. And then uh, the driver Saldivia and the Mark. I, they've uh, shown they've shown D1 times on the leaderboard. So if they qualify high and just be able to play defense the rest of the race, I think they're going to have a good night. So we're seeing some Jason Allen hate in the chat right now. Oh, no. As Matt Anastasi did put in the best lap for literally a split second until David Funk said, nope, I'll take that back, thank you, and oh, beat him by 1.6 seconds. Immediately with the 218s. <laughs> um, it's David Funk, so he'll be in the 17s in this next lap. Yeah. They are going to be some quick times. I... I thought it was going to be a couple laps before we saw 18s because the track is now just hitting optimum, so did not well, expect it. Well, he's so far the only one. The second person in Carbo is one second behind, so I think David Funk's got some uh, special sauce going. <laughs> he does have that special sauce, but he's got to be careful, though, because if you look on the track right now, he is almost on the diffuser of uh, Anastasi there. Anastasi? So yeah, he is a diffuser at this point. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, you know doesn't... that David in the car is going. Please move. Let me go, please. <laughs> and since uh, Anastasi is on a valid lap and gaining time, he does not have to give that up. So that is all on Funk to back off and abort the lap, which it looks like. Oh. Nope, that's still he a might valid do now, lap. He just... It's still valid, but he is down on his time now. So we'll see if he can make it up these corners, or if he likes to just back off, give Anastasi some space and whatnot. Yeah, I know, but that's, what, turn 14 out of 20, and you gain half a tenth on the rest of them? You're still up on exactly. your time. <laughs> There's so many corners. how long this track is. I messed it up on turn one yesterday. It didn't end up working out well for me anyway. But I messed it up turn one. I was up over six tenths by middle point of the track. I'm like, this is great. I don't feel like I have to redo the layout. Yeah, it, it's crazy that, you know, like... You may have messed up one turn, but it's not like a lot of the other tracks that we race at, which are, you mess up one turn, you kind of mess up the entire lap. Here, it's, you mess up one turn, you got so much time to gain in other points. And I remember Michael Griffith, the huge legend that he was this weekend, handing out free uh, free coaching sessions one-on-one -on -one for 
a lot of the hours of Saturday. Um, basically, you preaching to everybody is like, listen, you don't have to find a lot of time in each corner. You find half a tenth per corner, and you will gain almost a full second. Just because yeah. <laughs> you compound that. So long. <laughs> Well, as we've been going, uh, rambling on, we do have two other drivers now into the two 18s. Uh, Saldivia, who, again, I see is doing really well. Oh, he's actually got a yellow. I think he went off. Uh, that's interesting. But uh, Douglas Mitchell. Yeah, he who's is. Who's coming up the top of ready on right now. To the moon for Ghost Rider Racing there. But Williams, that's a driver I want to take a look at. Going through Blanchemont right now. Um, up a second, which will move him up quite a bit. That will move him into uh, about sixth. And Spangler, yes, it is a Ferrari Challenge series, basically. <laughs> it is all Ferraris. It's so many Ferraris. With like two or three They're teams be... that are driving something different. They're going to have a lot of home crowd support when we get to Emelo and Monza. That is if it's not flooded. But uh, Williams yeah. just crossed the line, moved up to six. Uh, Jean Sadre up six tenths uh, as we get through, uh, what was that, turn 11 ish area as he gets down the hill towards Puyon. I'm going to butcher a lot uh, of these. Uh, Lowick's going to be mad I'm gonna at me. Interrupt you really quick because I just noticed something interesting as I'm watching Doug be almost half a second up on his time. Uh, he's actually right behind David Funk and Anastasi. So he's he's gonna end up if catching if he keeps going at this pace, which is faster than Funk is going at the moment. <laughs> oh boy, and we are told, hey, give yourself a gap of two to five seconds, just depending on who's in front of you and pace wise. And so that way we're not bunching up. What was that? And who tells us that? <laughs> uh, that would be Doug. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <Huh>, interesting. <laughs> so, uh... Let's see if he gets his lap in and then just proceeds to back off. But he can't back off, because look at the time. They're at under 10 minutes. And... They got... Yeah, they've got 45 seconds to get around the track to be able to set another one for people that are not already across the line. So we're going to be seeing some last-minute pushes to try and get to the top spot that David Funk still holds because he went into uh, the 17s now with a 217.75. Yeah, well, I had... But Sold Saldivia... Oh, yep, go ahead. Well, yeah, I had Soldre and Carbo just cross the line. Soldre moving up to P5 and then getting bumped down because Carbo moved into P4. And now you're good to say what you were saying. But Saldivia right now coming through the final two corners here up a second <laughs> on his time. God. Oh my god! <laughs> David Funk has got to pull out a heater because Saldivia has provisional pole at a 217.2. And he parks it. He's like, I'm done. That's yeah, he's fast. like, I'm done. <laughs> well, and actually, the, the one thing, too, is you see that on the track map, you're starting to see a little the blue dots starting to roam into the track. Um, the Silver Driver's if they were still on the valid lap as 10 minutes finished up, they still can go. But since the pit lane is so awkward here and it throws you up at the camel straight, that these skull drivers have to be careful because you can go in and mess up the line of a silver driver during the qualifying. Oh, yeah. And there is, um, I'm sure, very, very strict rules made on that um, in the driver briefing earlier today because that is a punishable offense if you do it. <laughs> Yes. But, so uh, David Funk and Doug Mitchell right now not looking like they're improving too much, but you know who is right now is Anastasi in the P5 spot, as well as we got Chris Ridding Jr. down in 13th. He's up half a second. Uh, Mustillo in 17th is up 9 tenths. So we still know. got quite a few people that are uh, improving. I'm going to be on board here with Anastasi. Comes Anastasi. Across. I'm on Wedding Jr. right now as he is right. in the middle to end of Sector 2 here, getting into Sector 3. Anastasi just backs out right before the line because I guess he lost it coming through the uh, final part of the lap there. 
I'm going to be on board with Mistio now, who's up six tenths now. Lost two tenths, but still up quite a bit. These How's corners. How's Junior looking? Uh, he's now only up uh, about two tenths, kind of about three tenths. But that turn 16, it's really turn 15. Turn 15 sets you up for all the way to the bus stop. Because if you don't get a good exit and run out of there, you actually lose Over. your top end speed. And you're not able to carry as much speed as you want to through all the rest of the corners. So it's a hefty price you have to pay if you get a bad exit. But Winning Junior. Oh, yeah, it is. Looks like he did improve, but not enough to move up the order. Mustillo, however, did improve, and it moved him from 18th up to 16th. So a couple spots there just to tap off um, his qualifying. And I'm now we on board with Dehi. Is I think he's a uh, one of the first golds to go across. I'm on board with Max, show. who's the first, and Dehi's okay. right behind. But while we wait for these gold well, drivers, I'll be on board with, uh, Dehi, then. Uh, as we wait for the gold drivers to get through this first lap, that is about two minutes and some change. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to all the sponsors that you see that are going through on the banner in the pip window. Uh, CGA, the coach, the greatest of them all uh putting on all the stuff that goes on as fantasy predictions as far as that stuff great community asset we have here uh, go setups so if you have any setup issues you can get go setups we are partnered with them so anything you spend does help the league out through our affiliate link and if you do have issues after that it is no longer a setup issue it's just a skill issue uh, documize i would know <laughs> yes documize a document control uh, software that can help you improve your lap times on the office. Armin Ontario, a great software for HUD. It makes it the next step up for a lot of your software in the HUD. Seeing a lot of your inputs, your brake, throttle control on a graph, steering input, things like that. Track Racer for all of your needs when it comes to a rig, either a flight simulator or racing simulator. And affiliated with them, use a our affiliate link to help the league out and then retro saga for all of your retro gaming needs make sure you check all of them Love out them. they are on our website as well as our discord well back to the racing as we see simmons here actually getting through to the last few corners and close to bus stop here i love bus stop it's such a heavy braking corner that if you it's fun in the Porsche. <laughs> oh, true. You fling that thing in, and you got to make sure you avoid the sausage curves there too, or else you're just gonna unsettle the car a huge amount. But let's see where Simmons puts it. It looks like P9 for the moment. Um, still more time in it. Uh, Dehi coming in at eight. And we're seeing where some of these other uh, gold drivers come into is we got Dan Rebel coming in at P15. Definitely see the phase of warming up the tires really playing an important factor this season. Um, after the oh, one yeah, point, it's entry. crazy. Yeah, it takes a couple laps, like uh, was it two or three, to really feel the tires actually improve and be at the correct temperature that you need them to be. I believe it's three. Yes. Yeah, and with how long uh, spies, you really don't have it. You have to get them up really the temperature really quick. But thankfully, since it's so long, it actually takes maybe one lap less because it is such a long track. I was looking at Taylor's delta going, wow, he's up seven cents. Yeah. Oh, he just invalidated. Oh, no. Taylor. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I'll be on board with Landshark then. Oh. Wait a minute. Where's Zitko? I don't think. I don't think. Oh, no, Zico is here today. He's in 18th at the moment. He is improving. Um, he, sh If he continues his lap, it will put him up into probably 13th. Well, are you still on board with Dehi? Dehi's invalidated now, unfortunate. I am not. I am on board with his teammate, Manchuk. Well, I was looking at it. He was up five times with an invalidate. I'm going to be on board with Simmons again here. He's up a second. Almost. That will move him, and see, well into uh, the top 10. I'm trying to do math. 
Math yeah, is hard. It's okay. Yeah. Top three, even, I think, if he keeps this pace up. But he has lost some time. So definitely top five in my books. No worries, Carlos. That's why we are here, is to help you guys uh, figure out where people are and get the people that you want to see on camera. Don't worry. I'm blind, too. Um, I also don't want to say it words, and I still bad. do it every week. That's also true. <laughs> uh, there it is. Simmons up into P3. Nice. Let's jump, I'll jump on board with Zico here. He actually is up six tenths uh, coming through this tough little chicane uh 13 14 and then into turn 15 like i said turn 15 really sets you up for blanchement and into the bus stop if you carry the speed through here you end up having a lot more higher end top speed throughout this entire section which is always important especially considering that this entire area is flat out uh, you don't really lift unless you are on a have your fuel load and you feel like you're going to extend outside of track limits but as soon as i know yeah, we were board, just talking about how people can't take uh eau rouge flat in the ferrari yep land shark just basically did about as flat as you can go there was just like a second of uh <laughs> of what not at 100 percent oh my so God. he he was he is going oh and i just jinxed it <laughs> Sorry, shark. I love you. I did not mean to do that. He's still on a lap, it looks like, though. He is, so he can't make up his time. However, I'm going to be on board with his teammate, Dehi, again, because he's Dehi's up a half a second at the moment. I'm on board with Taylor, who uh, almost eight tenths up going through uh, Julian now. Again, I'm going to get yelled at by the French people. I know I, I took French in high school, but it's been way too long for me to remember all of that. Shame on you. <laughs> Alright, I got a question for you. We have 1 minute and 20 seconds left in qualifying. So far, none of the golds are at around the pace of Funk or Saldivia. Saldivia. Do you think anyone will be able to touch Funk or Saldivia? I think that we could get a gold t uh, in touch with Funk's time. And it's going to be very tight, but I think Saldivia is going to have it. Like I said, looking at the I'll have leaderboards. Saldivia was doing D1 times. This driver is Whoa. way too fast for, for at Spa. So, yeah, and Spangler is giving us the information that pole for D2 at the moment is a 217.5. So, Dehi able to bring it up into fourth place at the moment. Still got time for one valid lap, so we'll see what he can do. Taylor, from the depths of the board, bringing up into P6. You'd love to see it. I'm going to be on board with Fire Queso because he's running at the last curve about four tenths. Ooh, and he's got me. time for one more as he puts it into fifth. Let's see. That's Super Dave. It is Super yes, Dave. Let's is. see if he gets across the line in time. Looks like he, he does. Oh, he did just barely. I think that will be it, though, for uh, driver of the 947. Pro check. Probably. It is. Zitko. Protrek is the first driver to be done with qualifying for the golds. Parks on the side there. Zitko is invalidated. Sikom is invalidated. Oh, he is. Damn. Not what you want to see. Fickert, however, not invalidated. Up two tits. Uh, I'm going to look at Poliak. who is. can't see him, apparently. Uh, Poliak. And guys, I promise, I synced my liveries literally... About 10 minutes before the race started. Uh, one thing I want to mention about Jack here. This man is a fan of the M4. Doesn't look like he was able to find a teammate for the M4 or was not feeling it this season. Has made the begrudging switch to the Ferrari. So, I guess he is on a learning curve with this car. I know he was the go-to man in the league for any questions about the M4. He puts it up into P20. Nice. So. You know, I'm going to switch off of Fickert, sorry Fickert, and go to Landshark, who's currently up 8 tenths as we're getting close to the end of this lap. I'm on board with Simmons, who is the only person in the top five that was able to threaten around pole. Uh, as comes into the bus stop up 4 tenths? Get him close, but not exactly. 
in the second place. Get some P3 by five hundreds. Exactly five hundreds wow. too. Wow. <laughs> if Simmons is looking at it, that right now, going, whoo, or not Simmons, uh, Funk is looking at it, going, whoo. <laughs> All right, on board. Ficker just crossing the line, moves him up to P21. I know you're on board. With shark, shark right now. A second gap it moves him from 28th up to 10. My gosh. And I think everyone else is uh, either invalidated or coming nope. to stop. Except Rogers. Roger. Rogers, making some moves here corner. at the last chicane. Last corner. Coming oh, around. he's got bogged good. down by TC though. Oh no. Unable to make a real improvement there at the end. That's unfortunate. Got well, so very close though. I need to figure out what's going on with my intermission screen because I don't have a Discord yes, mic for you, John. So people won't be able to hear Lovely. you until I switch over. Oh, that's nope. great. Oh, we fixed it. I fixed it. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, your top three for the race: Seldivia, Funk, Simmons. It's going to be interesting. Um. Does that change your projected winner for the divisions at all? Or splits, I guess, at all? Um, just a little bit. I mean, Saldivia was obviously my pick for silver. Um, I'm still favored on Dehi, though. But we'll see Same. what happens. Um, Fire my Case gold was... winner still Dehi. Fire Case was my uh, black sheep for gold this week. Unfortunately, the though, for. the person I was thinking would win silver is currently P8. Dark Horse. On, Doug, That's the word down. I was looking for. Not Black Sheep. <laughs> Dark Horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's get back to the grid, though, as we are getting ready Just to... Angler, that is the worst possible joke I've ever seen. <laughs> did he... What did he say? Oh, it's... my gosh. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what are you doing to us? This man. Somebody come get him. Let's quickly he must look have it. He's got the dad jokes already. He does. Spangler's on a, a dad joke grind. Uh, I love hearing dad jokes too. I, they're my favorite. While we wait for these drivers to get ready for this long formation lap, quickly gonna just... Yeah fly down the grid to show off all these wonderful liveries as we still see some cars in the air um my favorite part about this is watching them uh get out of their setup menu and start bouncing around that's obvious i love seeing it on track i don't know why it just brings me that small amount of happiness that i need <laughs> in a race oh you only need a small amount so you're usually what depressed i guess hey easy i didn't say that Hey, there's nothing wrong with depression. Uh, anyway, as we're going through this um, very, very, very long formation lap, do you want to hear about this week's fun fact? Subject. Yeah, I'm always down to hear about the fun fact subject. All right. Since we're in Belgium, fun facts this week are about waffles. Oh, boy. I thought you were about to say, like, French fries, too. Technically, French no, fries just are waffles. Belgium, too. <laughs> yes, that's a common misconception. They are not, in fact, French. Yeah. All right, so I'll give you one fun fact about waffles now, or I can give you this week's uh, new thing, which is a fun fact about a driver. Uh, let's hear the driver fun fact first. Hear cool. So I'll actually go and take a look at him while we are doing this. It's going to be about Dehi Yu who is right here, P5 after qualifying in that Ferrari, go comic racing. Um, but Dehi Yu's favorite fruit is a peach. He actually prefers white peaches in particular. Um, and if you want to get even more particular, the ones from Korea. But that's not I didn't know that Korea had a specific kind of peach, but that's actually kind of interesting. I would love to try it, but I do have another fun fact about his teammate, Landshark. Uh, oh? Though his name suggests he's an actual shark, He's not actually a shark. He's a real person. Whoa. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> oh. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. Oh, uh, Justin's gonna fire us. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm surprised that I still have a 
hosting job, job after quote unquote. all the hiccups I have each week. <laughs> uh, but I know I hated this formation lap. <laughs> to be completely oh God, honest. It was, As a, it was so... I got bored halfway <laughs> through. Because I was at the back, so I, my max speed was, I think, probably 70 kilometers an hour. Oh, For I'm... about three seconds. I was like, this is ridiculous. It's... And Jess Bain it's... calling Day he a peach. He is a peach. Oh, <laughs> he is. Yeah, I remember sitting there and just heating my brakes up and then letting go and watching yep. the tire temps go up and then immediately go back down. It was yep. the same thing. And my brakes were like orange by the end of the formation lap just because of how long oh it was. God. And I was just like, man, I just can't do this. Yeah, if there <laughs> was longer. ever a race where we should have done like the last three turns of the formation lap, it's <laughs> spa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one was so much worse than Paul Ricard, even with that long straight, just because this track is just so long yeah i love the track i love it to death i'm not good i'm not fast at it i love it but it is so long when you're going 60 kilometers an hour <laughs> yeah well uh while we are uh, finishing this formation lap we did have some penalties that happened throughout the last race uh it resulted in driver 308 having a qualifying ban but Probably why you didn't see Lee out there setting times if he's in here. I've missed that. He is. He's yeah. uh, last at the moment. Yes, and that's because obviously he was not able to qualify. But he's able to start right away at the back of the grid, which is nice. Um, that's something different that we did this season, which might help out some of the drivers that do end up having a qualifying band, so they're not just uh, stuck waiting for people to pass them through the pit lane. But that's the only sure that was last season. The only one of major uh, note because I believe that Logan Schaefer is not in this race. He is not in this race that I know. I believe he said he was having to take a break due to school, which is allowed <laughs> because we all have lives and lives come first. And no, never. Himself. Yes, I'm kidding. It does. <laughs> well, Please we do see burn. the drivers now starting to line up two by two. By two, by two, by two. Uh, oh, wow. And you'll notice something as we get through the bus stop that we're not going to get to green light right away. We do have to go through turn one of Les Source. And that straight leading into Eau Rouge is actually the where the green flag goes just because of how short this, this run is into Les Source. And it'll probably be carnage. As we've seen <laughs> historically through F1. Yeah, 2012 was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not and 20, on. what, 2019? Uh, there, there are so many years. <laughs> you could just throw a number yeah. out there. And... 2005, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, you'll be right. <laughs> it's always chaos here. It is, but it's a great track. Yes. As well, we get lined up and ready. Call us down. We are getting to that point. You'll see the overhead bridge lights start to appear in the alley where that total sign is, and that's about where you see the green lights go off. There it is. The drivers are off and away. So we see them go through Eau Rouge for the first time, and they do have to start side by side. But it looks like the leaders got off to a great start. Uh, how are we looking towards the back? We need to start looking down the order. Not seeing any yellow flags pop up, which is a good sign. Everybody looking like they made it through Eau Rouge and Radion very clean which is always a good sign, especially on this track, because that pit lane is so far away and so long that you don't want to have any incidents in this first lap just because of how long you have to wait to get to the pit lane. And then while you're in the pit lane, going through yeah. and waiting at 50 kilometers per hour to get to your pit box. <laughs> and I want to point something out. We got the man, the myth himself, Dom Duran in here, praising... All of D3 for an unbelievably clean start. That was amazing. Dom, I don't want to jinx it yet. It's not over. We're only halfway through. <laughs> oh my one. god, it's so long. <laughs> we have to go through the full thing first. <laughs> but something yeah, interesting. Other tracks. 
Oh, go ahead. Story passed Funk. Bro, Story sitting in P2 right now. He did? Oh, he did? Yeah. Why is my leaderboard... Oh, God. He <laughs> goes one three two. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I heard that Crown died in D2. Oh, no. That is not good. But we are getting through Blanchemont right now as we see Sal Christian Saldivia leading, uh, holding on from pole. Well, we have Story trying to chase down right now and we'll see how they get through here. I see cars going side by side there at the bus stop. Flags in the back. Oh no. I'll take a look at what just happened. We got Whitting Jr. and Roger for sure. Possibly White coming through the kink kind of right-hander before the bus stop. Just kind of went out wide. Got touched by the Mercedes. Got spun out and then almost collected what looked like Super Dave possibly. But managed oh. to just get past without collecting him. But he and uh, Roger are down in 35th and 36th. And they just passed and the pit lane it. too. So if they did take any damage, they are unlucky. They have to go through a whole nother lap to even get a chance to go on the pits. I think they, they both had the ability to go into the pits. But I think what was going on was we hadn't had our pit window open yet. So they were... If they do have enough damage, they're going to wait a lap to do it then. Oh, no. I see. Oh, my gosh. What did I just join into? I saw a driver die at the top of Eau Rouge. What happened? I saw another car get collected. They are sitting there waiting for drivers. Very good on them. As it looks like the Ferrari for Grid Thieves of Banderi lost it as well. And they ended up hitting each other. So... Not an incident where they came back on track. They just happened to have another car lose it there at the top of Eau Rouge. But not what you not... want to see. Yes, exactly. You realize that we jinxed it by saying that the first half was clean, right? It, the first lap was clean. I know that. No, because uh, Whitting Jr. and yes, uh, Roger, right. that was on the first lap. You are right. <laughs> jinxed it by saying it was a great first start. <laughs> Jump on board from Doug here. Sorry, trying Dom. to chase down uh, Taylor. I'll give you a nice interior. Oh, I'm on the bonnet. You might. I think a wing cam is going to be uh, a good one here, actually. Oh, okay. I'll get a wing from Taylor then. Yeah. See if Doug's going to make any uh, big dive into bus stop. I think he's too far back to really make the move, but he can get close enough to. Give Taylor some scare as we get a good exit onto the main straight here. He just went into the pits. So. Oh, I wonder if he got some damage, but hitting early on here actually isn't terrible just because of how long the pit lane actually is. Um, and if you get clean air, it might just be better. Because then you're able to just hot lap. You know Sean Daniels? I will do that for a little bit. I'm not going to do it right this instant. I'll do it when we got a little less um, action going on. As Taylor definitely got a track warning for that. Okay. Come up the top of just then. Yeah. I, no, I surprisingly only had one warning after all of my stuff. As I see Rebel throwing some yellow flags. What happened here? Let's go back 15 seconds. As Rebel goes through Eau Rouge and Radion here. Looks like he took too much inside curb, unstills the car. Just loses it and hits the wall. Thankfully, does not bounce back onto the track at a weird angle. Just kind of rides that wall through. So, making sure that uh, joined it safely. Good on it, Dan there. Uh, looking uh, Robbie Zico. Toddy actually pointing out that Fickert has gained some spots already. He has. He's moved from 21st up to uh, 16th at the moment. Oh, and Doug Mitchell going down the inside. <laughs> on uh, whatever turn number this is of Taylor. <laughs> Pua, Pua, whatever. Yeah, one of the yeah, French sayings. <laughs> Poutine. Low where are you when I need you? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get a lot of hate tonight. <laughs> a lot of French okay. hate tonight. <laughs> I usually do because I just don't know the numbers or the turns names, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's a very famous corner, Taylor. It's like, I can't. I know a Rouge and Radio. Yeah. All right. 
looking at the track map, we see Dehi coming out into Lacombe now, and then you see all the other drivers that just followed him into the pits and where they're coming out. Um, I remember in the middle of Sector 2, I was looking and seeing if people were going into the pits because that's about when, if you see somebody go in the pits in the middle of Sector 2 at, like, I believe that's turn 14, if you're in that turn and you're seeing people dive in, you're probably going to overtake them, actually, at the end of the pit lane just because of, like I said, how long it is to go through it. It is an incredibly long pit lane compared second. to a lot of ours. Cause, oh no, he went too wide. Oh wait, never mind. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, that's on me. <laughs> the person he was in a fight with went into the pits. It's always how it works for me. It happens, and we do have that. We have continued that longer pit lane timer, which is nice. So it does help these people oh, yeah. that did have early damage. Uh, get in, fix that, and still be competitive instead of having to limp it around until that 35, 45 minute mark when the pit lane originally opened. You know, I gotta say, whenever we seem to see someone new on pole, they usually become very fast on the straight. Actually, I'm gonna interrupt myself because Super Dave and Lee going side by side right now. Oh, and they cut at the top of the, at the end of the straight there. Super Dave is off the track. He had to spin himself back around. Uh, Lee able to get away cleanly, but Super Dave just lost, I think, four spots to that, unfortunately. Oh, we also look like we're having a GoFundMe starting in the cop. For Jace yes. Allen, who I'm actually on board with. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching a good battle between uh, him and Krochek, actually. Uh, you want an interior cam? Yeah, let's get an interior cam. They started at Lake Home uh, after the camel straight and kept it side by side literally all the way until the end of... Uh, as they went into Puyon, uh, that's when the move was made by Krochik, and it looks like it's sticking right now as Alan is now going to have to come back and try to make the move to get that position back. Yes, he is. I'm going to hop a little farther anyway, ahead. Anyway, back to what I was... Back to what I was saying before the Super Dave incident. Um, every time we see someone new on pole and they continue it into the first few laps of the race, we normally touch on their gap because it's just crazy, right? Saldivia, after, what, three laps? Has built four seconds to story already. Uh, staying around three, three and a half at the moment, so it looks like it is growing. Um, it could also be that... We'll see it grow a little bit longer here as we go through Erosion Radion because, like I said early on, the Ferrari, it has trouble taking it flat out just because that car, for some reason, it gets unbalanced throughout that turn. Um, I was noticing it a lot through the D4 race as I see Landshark having a yellow flag be thrown. As it looks like this is kind of what I was talking about. The Ferrari gets unsettled very easily through this corner. You take it ever so slightly wrong and you see him start sliding there at the top and then slide all the way back across the map. Oh no, we're trying yeah. to get a, a free cam going into Pip. Oh yeah. Um, he wanted a, a, a view of O'Rouge. I'm going to do it for a couple laps here. Oh, that's Radion actually. Oh, I hate myself you know for even saying that. You should. <laughs> Does Dehi have open air? Yes, Dehi has very open air. He has no one around him. He just got through La Source and is going up Eau Rouge and Radion right now as we speak. So the next closest person has just finished. Uh, there he is. Through. Yep, you see that now? Let's see what's the gap, <laughs> actually. Dehi to... Uh, the next closest car is seven and a half seconds, and Dehi has 24 seconds to catch his teammate. You know what? I'm going to try and do some uh, interesting cameras here today. <laughs> oh, no. I never like... I don't like to hear this right now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to jump on board. I'm just fall. Don't Kaysa. worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's getting the Neom camera going now. 
Nyaum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nyaum. Uh, Nate's back. Let me go down a little bit. Let me make it even better. Uh, saying the amount of dead Ferraris is insane. In D2, every single champion motorsport driver died at Radeon. Uh, I'm going to count that down to a skill issue of champion motorsport drivers. Oh, no. <laughs> I will invoke Paulie's wrath. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dangerous wrath. <laughs> well, what's he going to do? Here we go. Another card. He's going to go on more tangents about champion motorsports when he's on air. <laughs> We're going to get enough of it. Oh, right now you're catching the uh, two drivers I was following of Queso and Ryder actually having a uh, battle. <laughs> Donahue. <laughs> uh, Donahue. Hey, thanks, Dom. I love you. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was getting to. As I see Sikong a yellow flag at the top Back of Sikong. Thank you. At the top of Radion looks like the same thing that happened to Landshark actually at the top of Radion there, getting a little loose, but instead of going uh, left to right, went just onto the left side. That, I had that backwards. Landshark went right to left, and Jared only went on the left side because of camera angles. I went and flip flop my words. He almost got hit. Did you notice that? I did. Oh, there's another Here's one. There's another Ferrari. Yeah. But he seems to be okay coming up the top. Let's just... Can we just say it's probably going to be a Ferrari tonight because what cars yeah, do we have it was in this? D5, it's all, unfortunately. It's 95% Ferraris. There goes Dehi and his glorious Nyan Cat livery. The uh, Nyan Cat that uh, we're attempting to fade. That's kind of like how Dead mounted. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna move down a little bit. I'm gonna go into over. Oh God! There we go. Even better camera angle for you now. Getting too fancy. You with can it. see. You can see who's really cutting it close, or not. If anything, I'd be on the other side. Cause that's the that's the curbing that you really get to abuse. As I see Brian trying to make a move here into the end of bus stop, unable to make the move stick. Uh, looks like Fire Queso, though, was able to make a move and pass Taylor, as Taylor's trying to fight back now into uh, the source. Unable to make the dive work as Queso just plants the car in the middle of the track to get that squeeze going and force Taylor out of the uh, optimal line right there. <laughs> I'm getting more love for my camera work. I'm loving this. <laughs> yep, it is good. I love to see it as well. I'm still gonna. I'm gonna keep an eye on that battle as I see uh, a couple fights down lower. I see Whitting Jr. trying to make a move on Super Dave. They are coming up to Eau Rouge. As Whitting Jr. had a better exit. I see a yellow flag being thrown for uh, Suave. It looks like that was also a Radion issue. They are Whitting Jr. was tempting side by side there, unable to make it stick. Besides, I'm gonna back out now has to try to catch super dave on the camel straight so we'll see if he's able to actually make that move stick that's the gopher cam back oh my gosh remember that's taking me back to like early 2000s mid 2000s nascar uh when they brought the gopher cam in and like it had a name at every single track a different one and then they had a graphic all of a sudden pop up and it was a little like caddyshack gopher dance pop up um, all right what do we want to name this gopher then? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Let's name it Dom. <laughs> Actually, no, since Sean Daniels brought it up, we'll name it Sean. I was going to go maybe a little bit more uh, French with it, considering that Belgium huh? speaks French and German. So I'm not good with okay, the German, go but I, I, I need to figure out what French name that would be. <laughs> Pierre. Pierre. <laughs> Let's go, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean saying we should call it Doug. Oh, gosh. The Doug cam? No, because the Doug the cam's Doug. the feet cam. I see a yellow oh, flag no. being thrown for Davis. At the top, go back and look and see what happened. It looks like it was another Eau Rouge and Radion incident. Oh, the Ferrari not having fun here in that turn. 
I know I looked at D6 chat and someone said, Odors is named for the red water or the uh, red that comes off the rocks and the iron, not because of all the carnage. And uh, I know I responded, it all depends on what we see in the next hour. And I'm seeing carnage, so Oruges might be red from the carnage we see. Unfortunately, that name has run true in real life. Well, John Williams uh, looking like making a move here on Figure, but backs off since they are going through this. Oh, Rouge Radion turn. Let's see if they survive. We got Where 43. Where Doug is. Go ahead. No, it was oh, me. Doug. I see it now. Le Doug. <laughs> we already have a blue flag. Yeah, we do. I just thought pop up in Le Doug cam. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, no. Zooch just died in D2. This is... We got another 42. I see a yellow flag. Who was that? Was that Davis? Let me go take a look. No, not it, Davis. Uh, uh, it's it. not over no. here. Oh no. I don't know who it was. I have, I've done a. I've pulled a Martin. Uh oh. Uh oh. Pulled a Martin. That's never a good sign. Yeah. No. I went too fast with the camera controls. Do not know who just died. You're riding on there just a little bit ago. But I'm back on board with the fight here of Super Dave actually. With Whitting Jr. actually catching up behind, but uh, Suave, or Suave, I don't know if it's Suave or Suave, um, is right behind them. And reach out to me if I ever get your name wrong, or update your profile on the SRA website. Uh, we just got this feature um, that Al and put in the good work. So you now can update your profile to have the phonetic pronunciation. It's very helpful, I will say. There's some names that I've been pronouncing wrong that I just didn't even know about, so... I'm still going to pronounce them wrong, to be completely honest. You can give me the phonetic thing, and I'm still going to butcher <laughs> it. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, that's why I am here. <laughs> exactly. I have you... Um, who does Taylor Sometime have this season? Mado. Taylor has anybody this season. Taylor's oh, not doing... Well, Taylor is still commentating. He's on a different night, though. That's what I'm saying. Taylor has... Josh Damiani to help him out. Oh, that's not a, that's not any better. <laughs> if you've seen the podcast, Damiani still is the same way as me. I see a yellow flag that pop up and disappear, unfortunately, so I missed that. But it looks like Super Dave was actually able to make the move and get past Whitting Jr. Did he? Or did he just get moved? I... I need to restart my brain. Give me a second. All right, back into it. Garrity saying that the default aggressive felt pre stable. I see super. I'm sorry. Oh God, Jesus. I caught. We Not both caught GoPro that. Cam. We we both caught that. I was following Super Dave, and you got it on the GoPro cam. That's I got it on the And what's the number now? Like ten? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Nate, can you help us update this total, please? Oh, I'm watching it back on the stream right now, and I want to... It, yeah, just another thing where they just get loose at the top of the hill. Super Dave. That is why I moved to the top of this yeah. corner. Uh, TPing back to the pits. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Nate says it's number eight. <laughs> oh. Well, leader check. Um... Valdivia, Valdivia is 7.3 seconds ahead, while Funk and uh, Max here try to battle it out for P2. But it's looking like a lot of the gaps uh, are kind of starting to open up. Uh, well, in that case... Well, let's see. Let's well, see the fun facts. I, I know you're starting yeah. to warm up to it. Sitting here with Le Gopher, uh, or Le Doug. Um, I told you our fun facts are about waffles this this right that this week. Um, waffles have been around since the 14th century. The first known set of instructions for a waffle recipe was written by a Frenchman for his wife during that time. And there was also mentions of an iron, so like a waffle iron type thing. So it would be interesting. If 
if waffle irons have been around for that long as well because um you know they haven't really done too much to help them improve <laughs> over the long ass time they've been here so <laughs> well i do have the question for you waffles or pancakes oh that's hard i know i see most I prefer, of the time pancakes though. i prefer pancakes just because of the nice buttery softness of them but i could go for a good waffle every once in a while just nice because buttery softness. yeah you can uh you can throw in the syrup and it has the little reservoir for all the syrup Damn it! Looks like land shark. Oh, Off yeah. at the top. Was it another? It was a blue Ferrari. I believe that is. is land shark. It is. I saw him TP to pits. He's it's just the same thing that happened earlier in the race for him, except this time didn't bounce across the track. Unfortunate. Oh, whoever I was with just left because I'm back in a car now. Uh oh. Uh, control F7, F7, you won't be following. <laughs> Just hit Control, control F7. F7. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> Trust me, I have to do, I do this a lot. Gone. I, I do this a lot for taking photos and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Robbie Toddy, the DJ Khaled, another one. Another one. That's what Arouge is, is actually... saying tonight. Arouge and Rowdy. Yeah, it really is. is. <laughs> Make it stop. Pick a better this car. Is actually really, <laughs> this is actually a really, really good angle this race today, it seems like. It is. I was hating on it at first, but now I'm not quite enjoying it. Even because we are, especially with how spread out the cars are now, you're going to have oh, almost a car over a the second. Top. Oh. Uh, we almost had another Ferrari go off at the very, very top. He managed to save it. Oh my gosh. All right. Another question that relates to pancakes versus waffles. Go for it. Would you rather have your pancakes and waffles in the morning, or would you rather have them like in the evening around dinner time? Say, let's call it Brenner. Brenner. Um, I used to be a Brenner man, but as I've gotten older. Oh, and there's a Mercedes that goes off. It's Taylor at the top. Oh, I'll Just get Just sliding these. out of the top of Radion back in into the barriers. Managed to keep it going, did not teleport to the pits, but he is off. I think What's that might it? be one of the first Mercedes we've seen do that today. I think so. I may have missed one, to be completely fair, uh, but as the first one I, we've caught. Yes. And I just been, saw a track cut. Immediately uh, put under pressure, though, by Anastasia as well. But oh, yeah, with the... that damage, it's going to be difficult as well. But yes, back to your question. I used to be a Brenner man, but uh, as I've gotten older, I like having my pancakes in the morning. What can I say? It's a nice way to wake up. Crepes are... Crepes are awesome, yes. Crepes. Crepes. Come on, get it the French. Crepes. Okay. <laughs> Bite me. As I see Anastasi making a bold move through Puyon right there, uh, going on the inside of Taylor, making the move stick at the moment. Looks like the move is done and dusted unless Taylor can come back here into the bus stop chicane is probably his next best moment. But if he has I'm diffuser sorry. damage, he will not be able to do too much. So Sean Daniels saying he burns really thin pancakes over crepes. <laughs> it's the same thing. Say <laughs> to a Frenchman, he'll kill you. You're basically pulling the Ricky Bobby. You know, you're French not, you toast or bust? I can't. I can't do French toast. I, I've tried. My you know, wife you know what was them. great as kids though, was French toast sticks, like the cinnamon French toast sticks. Still couldn't do it. I can't do it. I see Ooh, Taylor also throwing another yellow flag. I wonder Looks if it has like, something to do with his uh, damage. Yeah, is he going through Blanchemont right now? And the car just. A little snap of oversteer there and hits the wall so he's limping his way through the pit lane now uh leader update only 6.9 seconds now so punk is trying to catch the leader but it's not looking uh, too promising especially <laughs> with uh max right there putting pressure on so i guess they might have a gentleman's oh. agreement to not fight <laughs> trying to catch the leader 
<laughs> Nate Specht right now asking you what kind of man does not like, or what kind of freak, my apologies, does not like uh, um, French toast. Okay, so here's the reason why it got ruined for me. This goes back all the way to elementary school. We had it for lunch, that elementary school did it, and they did it so poorly that it just ruined it for me forever. It, wow. Like, it, it's just like ingrained in my brain that I have it, French toast, not good. <laughs> And I just can't eat. I've tried. I've tried it so many different times throughout life, and I just can't. Ooh. Chad Sanchez, how about English muffins? Those are good. Those are good. Got some jam Specifically on Specifically the Thomas ones. The Thomas brand is really good. <laughs> oh, we got another for our people! It seems like... Dehi! Dehi, oh, Dehi no! Dehi is off at the top! Completely uh, stopped at the... As we've got more cars coming up the top right now, we've got another Ferrari heading towards him. Dehi luckily off the track now. He looks it's like he's going to be spinning it around to keep trying to go. It's the same spot for every single Ferrari. Uh, Nate, it is. I'm not dropping you, buddy. You're staying on my French, on my French toast hating fantasy team. I will agree. Unfortunately, that French Dehi toast. did. Just teleport back to the pits. Oh no! So that is not good for the comic racing team. That's not good. Um, yeah. I will say though, French toast, even though I don't like it, is a top tier, S tier breakfast food, like pancakes it and is. waffles. So I let's just put it. Right. All breakfast food is top tier on the food chart. As I see, Sean Williams go <laughs> way deep into bus stop. Uh, looks like made the move. Oh. Other driver went on the pit lane. That's why he made the move. <laughs> I was like, how did he make that move stick? Might have to give that one up. Nope, driver's in the pits. <laughs> Nate is going to throw your races because you don't like French toast. <laughs> I'm, hey, I still said it was elite. I'm not saying, I'm not denying that. It is a staple breakfast food that people love. And they even made a whole different cereal just for it. <laughs> Cinnamon toast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oatmeal? Oatmeal. I love oatmeal, though. I love oatmeal. There's so many different things you can do with it. Maple brown sugar and apple cinnamon, of course. Um, yeah, eggs over hard. That's that's actually a, that's actually a good take, Jeremy. Uh, eggs over hard is... <laughs> why not, even, at that point, just have a hard-boiled egg or um, <laughs> scrambled at that <laughs> point? <laughs> hey, look, Darren is here. He's come in at a very interesting part of the race where we are talking about <laughs> breakfast foods. <laughs> but it, so it all Darren, got... as, a, as a Canadian, what do you think of Eggs Benedict? <laughs> was a track cut from that Ferrari right there. Okay, Eggs Benedict, never order at a restaurant, speaking from experience, because <laughs> the sauce, the hollandaise sauce, is so hard to make that they never have fresh hollandaise sauce. So never get eggs benedict at any restaurant no matter what they say made fresh it is not you gotta go to a, a like a famous a good right. restaurant not one no that, you know not even is in the middle of milwaukee or wherever you are i forget but <laughs> bacon for the win okay i could get behind that <laughs> i don't really like bacon all that much but it is an s tier food bacon is always s tier as i see i ate it, it so much as a kid that i cannot eat it anymore no that was just a blue flag Eggs Benedict is awesome when done right, but like oh. I said, never get it at a restaurant. <laughs> there was Taylor Molyneux, definitely cutting ready on there, barely missing the inside barrier of the corner. <laughs> oh my gosh, this, this corner is a that menace is. today. That Mercedes getting a little squirrely, able to correct it though and keep it locked down. Oh, let's see two drivers come through. Going by so fast, I can't. Whoa! I don't want to top in the dog camera. Yeah. Doug's gonna watch this back and go, why did they call it Le Dug? <laughs> <laughs> I blame Sean Daniels. <laughs> so, Sean and Nate, the count is up to uh, 10 Ferraris now, correct? And we still have half hour of racing to go just about yeah, we haven't even gone over like winners losers at all yet like it's been breakfast and cars dying 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's been some great moves as well. We can't forget about those. Um, it's always great when we see those overtaking moves, but recently there hasn't been too much. The, the most recent one that I caught on camera was the uh, Anastasi one. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, but there are some close battles forming. Uh, we have Simmons, Max Simmons versus Punk going on right now, and Fire Queso actually catching the dog. Did go on Anastasi. Sorry! Oh no, I see it's the It's number 11. Flag. And whoever that was, was I was riding on board with. Oh my god. Um, Sakon, Roger, and Dino in a fight. And Rebel and Alexander in a fight. Oh god. That's the major Martin fights happening again. up and down the list. And I see Ficker. Ha oh, oh my god. That's, well that's another Ferrari. I missed it. Oh. Yeah, what let are you Doug doing tonight? Oh my gosh, it is murder central from this corner. And there goes another Mercedes cutting the inside, almost hitting oh. that barrier. <laughs> oh, you got another. We've now. Oh gosh. We're now at 12 Ferraris murdered at uh, Eau Rouge Radion. Oh and I think we're at, what, two Mercedes? And that's it. It's mostly. Ferraris and then two Mercs. Well, it's easy when 95% of the, the grid is Ferraris. Ferrari. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is too much. But, I mean, there's at least good battles going on up and down. I see a yellow flag being tossed out by another Ferrari. This time at the bus stop, though. Looks like they may have went too deep. And the car of Chris Whitting Jr. actually having a fight with Suave, as I see a yellow flag from Fickert being thrown out in Puyon right now, actually. I'm not going to go to that, as I see Chris trying to dive on the inside of a source there. Gets the move done, heading up into Eau Rouge. Pretty much non-passing area, so we'll see if they can survive this deadly, deadly corner we are seeing. Oh, that was almost 13, as we just saw another one. <laughs> almost completely lose it, okay. but this time into the inside of Eau Rouge. Uh, tire wear contributing to these crashes? Yes and no. It's been happening since minute one. <laughs> but now is where we'll get into the area where it could be playing more of a factor, yes. Yes, agree. I see Figured is still throwing a yellow for me. It looks like Figured had another instance going into the Blanchemont area. And there's this park there and into the pits. Go with Rebel going into the bus stop. Rebel going super deep. Oh, not deep at all, actually. Able to get that car under control, wrap it around that apex, and get the move done. What a wonderful move. If what? anything, okay. that is the move of the night with Anastasi for me so far. Wow. Um, Nate's going to fight with me again because he, he brought up that Everyone in Champion Motorsport is having issues, and uh, do I need to say it again? <laughs> skill issue. <laughs> Champion Motorsport skill issue. I'll take it for issue. you this time. <laughs> oh, I love the community that we have here with all the little rivalries that we have. As I see another Ferrari die. <laughs> Sick him! Oh my god. That's 13 so, now. That was probably attributed to them following the car of... Nate Rogers so closely through Eau Rouge and Radion that they had to lift and was unable to get the car brought around the correct line in time and had that arrow wash and lost it. I'm going to move myself over a little bit so we can potentially see even more carnage. Uh, does this entire division consist of three manufacturers? Yes. <laughs> yes. You got Lambo, Ferrari, and Mercedes. Ooh, that is it. Door banging right there between Gino and Roger, it looked like. Or not Gino and Roger. It looked like somebody ahead of them. Uh, maybe Mas Oh, yeah. we all had 14. David and well. Gino having a little bit of a door banging uh, incident there, which allowed David to get through and Gino lose a couple spots. Might not be happy with that situation. 
but bad Santer, that is not what we are doing tonight. <laughs> yeah, uh, liver cannot take it. Agree. Interesting here. Uh, the leader is also in this fight with Roger and Mastillo. Mastillo, Mastillo. We'll go with Mastillo. Uh, so they are getting shown blue flags, and they need to get out of the way. But they also are thinking, I need, I want to get this move done. But the blue flag has precedence over this situation, in my opinion. As the blue flags are moving out of the way, there goes the leader on the dive into the bus stop chicane. And Roger rightfully giving that up. But Gino is now right there into that fight. Taylor is in a fight here as they're going through a rouge. Uh oh. Uh oh. Side by side. Looks like Poliak decided to back out here. And Good move. <laughs> Taylor cutting a lot of that inside there. <laughs> Maybe a little too much. Oh, um, yeah, that was definitely looked like a cut. <laughs> we're 15 laps in, and I've not seen a drive through uh, show up for any driver. <laughs> Seeing how much. It's kind of shocking. I know. It seems like Spa was very lenient compared to other tracks with the track cut. Oh, I missed it. Funk got passed by Simmons just recently, actually. I I scrolled up and I saw the the little arrow pointing up and down. So Funk just recently lost his position to Max here. So Max is now going to try to hunt down uh, Saldivia here, and that lead hasn't grown much here in the past couple laps. It's still hovering around seven seconds in that seven second range. So may have just. Uh, have to deal with a little bit more of that blue flag traffic as we're seeing you see on the track map it might be a little tough but he's, the leader is going through Puyon right now with a gaggle of cars maybe three or four just from the track map that I'm seeing so, it's uh it's gonna be a tough fight to the end for these drivers in P2 and 3 really try to get caught up I'm gonna jump on board with Roger here uh, getting a move done as I say that I clicked on David but it looks like Roger got the move done and David is immediately under pressure from Gino so a little bit of a uh, three car battle going on and they kind of had that awkward exchange they had to deal with with the leader as well so. a lot of fights happening right now uh, looking at the grid it looks like let me see here. P13 and P1 have yet to pit, whereas everyone below that in P14 to P28 have all pit. We had more than that to start this race. We had around 30 some. I believe so, yes. So it's surprising how many uh, people have backed out. Because at this point, it's just a lot an attrition of, battle. A, a lot of incidents <laughs> at the corner I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is the last cool angle of the night, but for O'Rouge and Radion. Well, you're about to see the battle I'm following, but as they get up the hill, one is going to go over, they dug. Cut that corner pretty uh, <laughs> heavily. And David's actually pulling away here from Gino on that straight. Looks like Gino had to lift a substantial amount. Wow, well. that was a massive cut. Yeah, make sure you didn't get that warning. And is now falling from half a second to about a second out. But that we that uh, Roger has. Uh, not Roger. David has got that lead that he has over Gino. Uh, he's got that increased. Words are hard, man. I don't know what is up with my they brain are. today. Like on a little ADHD kick of like, ooh, squirrel, kind of thing. It happens. Whoa! A massive track cut there from an orange Lamborghini. I'm not entirely sure who that was, but they were almost riding that inside barrier right there. Uh, important note, Max has now created a one and a half second gap to Funk and has cut a one and a half second gap out of uh, Saldivia's lead. So... Wow. If it's the blue flag traffic, I I don't see the blue flag traffic affecting 
Christian here that much. Yeah, just because he does have a little bit more clear air. Whereas Max is going to have to deal with all the traffic that he, that Christian just cleared. So we'll see uh, what is going to happen there. And yes, a mid-18 is correct. Their last lap was a 21-1, but their best is a 20, uh, 18.3. So they are a speedy driver. Uh, last oh, yeah. lap was now a 19.8, so we have some pace unlocked. Yes, you are seeing six and a half seconds ahead. Um, it's kind of fluctuating at the moment, just because of the blue flags that are happening throughout the lap. But he Max is trying to cut that lead down, and looks like be throwing their gap to funk a little bit more so definitely uh looking out for that one speaking of funk i think he just came over the top of le dog <laughs> le dog oh i love it uh i'm on board oh with we've got us oh, go ahead no i was just saying who i was on board with oh okay well while we've got a second here you want to hear a second fun fact about waffles oh i'm down I'm down. We're going to get off on All a tangent right. again on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably. It happened last time. We'll probably happen again. So the world, the world, the word waffle has Dutch origins. It actually descended from the Dutch word wafer, which makes sense because if you look at some waffles, they actually look like two tiny little wafers. Like, you know, the, with those waffle sandwiches yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking about. Uh-oh. Who is that? Is that Polyak that just went off? It is Polyak that just went off and allowed Rebel to have probably one of the easiest passes he's going to have all night. <laughs> he's not complaining. <laughs> exactly. But uh, back to the waffle fact. Uh, waffle sandwich, wafers. Yeah. The, but, um, the fact was, though, that the word waffle came from the Dutch word wafer. I don't know what that... I don't remember what that word was, but it descended from the Dutch word waffle. wafer. <laughs> It's amazing how mismatched some of the European things are. Like, we get waffle. Um, it's originally in origin is Dutch. Then you got French fries. It's, origin it's not even French. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Belgian. Belgian. <laughs> I'll just kind of go, why they're called French fries is because when we first found out about it, it's because, again, Belgium speaks French and uh, a little bit of German. But when we found them, they were speaking French, so we thought they were French. And so that's why they got the apprehension name of French fries. A well, fact hey, within there's a, a fact. Fun fact to... Yeah, exactly. Fun fact within a fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Fire Queso trying to make a move here on Doug, but Doug just kind of planted the car perfectly for defending that first turn there of Lasaurus. And now they're going into uh, Oruz and Radion, and we'll see if they can survive. It, top 10 oh, is... no. there's 14 oh my gosh i see it i see it through he's in cases. the middle of the track as well oh my gosh oh no and we do have traffic coming up the top he's Just sitting there just deep elected deep. to go back to the pits oh my gosh this corner is a menace today please stop <laughs> It's taken out half the grid. <laughs> oh, it Seriously, has. it's almost taken out half the grid. It's so bad. Oh, I can't believe it. Wow. Please. All right, I have a question for the community really quick. Is there a camera angle that you guys would like to see other than following a couple of close battles? So when we get near the end or right now, I can go and set up at that corner. Bus stop's always a good one, in my opinion, too. But there's not really been that many moves in the bus stop. Yeah. Because I've been focused on Eau Rouge and Radion because of all the incidents here. Yeah. You think we'll see a number 15 before the end of the race? Potentially. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking at race control. Race control's still borked, by the way with the oh yeah it's ridiculous uh moving up and down they have it backwards again yeah yeah right over the crest of radion 
is what uh, Nate is saying. All right. So, as Nate was saying today, uh, it's respect, so put some respect on it. Well, just kind of looking at the grid, I know that it's still a little funky with the drivers not having it completely yet. Uh, I think that's Nico Suave is uh, up 19 spots. That is the largest gain I've seen. And then the uh, Taylor Molino is down 13 spots as he started in sixth. So, but Fire Queso going side by side through this really that stretch from the pit lane up to Origin Radeon makes the move uh, before they get to it so that way they're not going side by side through that scary corner. He does not want to be number 15. Yeah, I wonder if that was just a blue, I think that was just a blue flag in the way uh -huh. and clearing that. Thankfully nothing happened from that. Uh, Sean Who's Williams uh, following Lee here, L.I. Lee. I'll be Michael and trying to catch him down the camel straight but it is Ferrari on Ferrari which does not leave much to uh, the advantage or disadvantage to each car because they are the same car so all of your advantage comes down to <laughs> how much wing you have yeah or if you do bad things at Rouge. yeah it, it's a prancing horse battle here in D3. But no real advantage on track between the cars. But uh, if you notice, P1 and 2 are both Mercedes. And P1 is actually 8.4 seconds ahead. As I saw Williams get a little loose there. Coming down the hill in the Puyon. So losing some time there into that battle but still keeping it close uh, and set up a move in sector three potentially uh, a lot of the drivers no, I totally for... go ahead i totally forgot that saldivia was in a mercedes i thought he was a ferrari although I'm, you know it makes sense because <laughs> keep talking about this just ferrari challenge <laughs> yeah um but it's kind of going back to it uh a lot of the drivers kind of not really having a ton of fights. They've stabilized their position as we get into the final 10 minutes here. Not really. Queso is still trying to uh, chase down Doug. Williams chasing down Lee. Story is actually trying to chase down uh, Suave here. Uh, again, Suave has not hit, whereas Story has. So... They are trying to uh, chase him down. Roger's actually having a close fight. As I'm staying on board here with the Williams fight, as they go into a source, uh, Williams having a deep, deep lunge on the outside line. Looks like they got a better exit, though. Making this move stick for the time being. Just don't die there, old Rouge, and you will be good. Yeah. Looks like they both survive. Uh, Transplant was saying, place the cam hovering, facing the crest with its back turned to turn one. You'll be able to see everyone without having to move the cam as they finish the incline to Eau Rouge. Uh, out of so many oh, Ferraris yeah, yeah. in the top two are Mercs, who would have thought? Um, I wouldn't, but I mean, I did pick Olivia to be kind of my main pick for tonight of being one of the top drivers just based off of their hot lapping times being a d1 pace but going into the nate roger fight they are uh putting a fight on to uh, alexander here from tim tier sim racing esports one of, like i said last week one of the new conglomerates and esports teams we have here they have a quite a large team and backing behind them, so good to see new faces and everything throughout it. As it looks like Nate had a eater run through Blanchemont, but goes a little wide. Let's see if he makes a dive here into the bus stop ops to avoid that. Looks like Funk is trying to bully his way through the blue flag situation here. Um, 
and they, they almost touch. Thankfully, they don't, but oh, that is twice, kind of... actually. <laughs> Roger trying to go for the dive, but I don't think that's wise, considering that it is a blue flag. But I see a yellow flag. It costs for Taylor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's, to it's it top of the hill. It's top of the hill. Oh, man. As soon as I moved. Yeah, just slides through it. Doesn't hit the wall, so he's off and away. But those tires are going to be cooked for the time being. Oh, yeah. Since we're in the last 10 minutes now, though, I am going to focus back on battles. So <laughs> You say that, and I don't see one within the... Yeah, I know. As soon as... <laughs> There was one, and I was on board with it. It was Rogers and Cespedes, but now there is no battle. <laughs> yeah, uh, Funk was making his way through and bullying his way through uh, bus stop, which he's well within his right as the faster car to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, but this battle's going to be back on hot now because Funk is getting through Cespedes, which will leave the door open for Roger now. <laughs> oh, that's... Always something you hate to see as a blue flag driver because you're like, I'll just let the faster driver go, and then you open the door for somebody else that's behind you to make the pass. And you're like, I can't defend this now. Oh, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I've had that happen to me more than once. <laughs> but, you know, just keep your head down and you'll be good. As Cespedes has kept his head down, he's still holding off Roger. So Yeah. Uh, Robbie and Nate having a little conversation about the Merc and the Beamer. I, Only 27 drivers, yes. Yeah. Yes, we have lost what? A lot. We've lost a lot. 14, no, five at least yeah. for sure. Yeah. There's been 14 accidents of Ferraris only. Just the Ferraris, there's been 14. <laughs> yeah. Um, I tried the Mark. I could not make that thing feel stable. As I say this now is uh, Rogers going side by side through Blanchemont very oh space given the very tight corner but just a little scared there so rogers elects to leave the track um but trying to make the move here in the bus stop they are wheel to wheel oh my gosh space oh, given but i think the inside line is going to be better here and that allows you just saw Sus doug go into the pits and that allows uh what's that uh, Alexander to get the better run, but Nate is not giving this up into oh, turn one. Wow. Here. Oh my gosh. So close. Nice, respectful racing from the two of them. Who gets the better run? Who is going to back out? They are so close. I would imagine. Oh my gosh, they are wheel to wheel now. They have the space. Oh my gosh, that is a gutsy move from both of them. No one wanting to give a solid inch and a half. They are back into this chasing down the straight here let's get a nice camera angle for this as they get into v8 on v6 power oh my gosh breaking zone they, oh, they touch do a touch. little bit looks like rogers is making the move stick oh my but now gosh that's what it says must on him is must on him as well oh what a that move all starts that from turn one amazing that set up from turn one that allows them to force alexander off of their normal line through eau rouge but respectful of each other backing off just ever so slightly to make sure they both get through there cleanly and then that leads to the camel straight where nate was able to use that slipstream and that mercedes engine power to get past uh, that ferrari and is now that's what it just looked like he almost became victim number 15 there for a second he was starting to lose it but managed to catch it which i think is what gave him um the speed disadvantage compared to roger yeah very much and again i don't know how the merc takes a rouge but it seems like the merc was taking a little bit better maybe it will take a little more flat out so uh that caused some issues for alexander there who's now having to really defend for his uh, position here from David of Podium Hunters. As we are seeing a lot of the top 10 here finish out their pits. So pit strategy is kind of closing up. It looks like Williams has lost the spot to Moffitt. Uh, it looks like that was potentially just a uh, coming out of the pits to La Rouge. Let me know when everyone has done their pits, and I'll give you almost final round of uh, winners and losers. 
Well, it's going to be tight for some of these drivers because I see the top three are in the pits now. So they all pit at the same time. Um, Anastasi has not pit, who is in the pits now. So he gets his one pit stop done. Suave, where is Suave? That's going to be He's really close for Nico here. He is entering uh, turn 14. And he's got a minute, so he has to get to that line. As I see a yellow flag toss for Mastillo. Oh no, that is another car that we see getting taken out by Eau Rouge, and he was in that was fight. That 15? Yeah, heavy hit there, oh, no. and just parks it and teleports back to the pits. So that's that fight over right there. Um, I'm going to jump on board with Nico here. He's got 30 seconds to get into the pits. Looks like he's going to be able to get through and cross that line and not have that any issues with uh, FIA being mad for not taking your pit stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nate, had, it is 15 now, yes. We've at least had 35 drivers, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, Mike Gino started in 35th. Wow. So. so we have lost almost 10. Yeah. Or no, we have lost 10 because there is no 25. Yeah. Or it uh, is 25. Well, it looks like everybody's made their pits now. Pit window, um, is now. pit window is now closed, but still drivers in the pit trying to finish up their, their strategies. We see. Oh, as we say, a Dan. great move from Dan. A deep. Does he make it stick? So far, makes it stick on White there, but can White come Alex. back here? into the first couple turns. All right, we're seeing drivers come out of the pits. Nico is the last one to come out of the pits themselves. They're still stopped. I uh, see, once I see movement, I'll kind of figure out where they're going to, they're going to come out right in front of uh, Polyak if they are moving. Yep, that's Polyak. Polyak is in 21st. That might, that's going to move Nico to 20th to 21st range. see it here oh he's not moving i lied haha <laughs> uh -huh, i faked you out <laughs> i looked at the track map and he was moving <laughs> all right so white has lost the position so far to dan dan was able to make it stick would you like to hear what seems to be the one of the final rounds the biggest loser winners today yeah let's see we got a minute left before the race ends um I would stick it on Moffat in the pit because he's chasing down Lee, and I will hop on board with the leader. For this last cool. So, biggest winner tonight, Prochik up 17 spots, started 27th up to P10. So great drive for him. Uh, um, maybe potential rubber chicken award coming his way. You never know. Um, unfortunately, biggest losers today <laughs> out of the ones that did not retire. Um, is Taylor, who started 6th down 18th because he was one of the only two Mercedes that we saw had an incident at Rouge Radion. So he's down 12 spots in the 18th. Of course, it's a but, little bit messed up because there are a lot of people missing. <laughs> yeah. Did I not say Krochik? I thought I said Krochik. Krochik uh, would be... Yeah, I, I thought you said Krochik. I'll, I'll throw my hand right, in for the driver of the day, or like you aforementioned, the rubber chicken award. <laughs> All right, who are you going to pick? I'm going to pick Krochik. If you could get the pit Krochik. onto Moffat's battle. Moffat? Okay. Uh, give me one second. I was on board with Doug, um, who is four cents behind David Funk, actually. Yeah. I'm going to pop on the leader as they are going through here. I know Moffat's been chasing down me. There's two great battles, three great battles. Now we got White on Rebel again, actually. Oh my gosh. It's all going to come down to the wire here. So, Fire Queso or has just not, or no, Lee is now 10 seconds behind? Oh no, he got ahead of Moffat. I think? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Moffat was chasing Lee down. Oh, okay. Then he was able to build up a little bit of a gap. All right. Uh, then I follow Dog here as they're getting through. Uh, 
Blanche Mont getting here. This is, la this is a dog's last opportunity as we see Christian coming across for a dominant win. Uh, P1 to P1. With the wow. fastest lap as well. Finishes the race with a 219. That's insane. Simmons coming across in P2. Funk coming down to the wire with Doug for P3 and then Doug P4. Uh, Ryder P5. Queso P6. Uh, Zitko coming to P7. Uh, John Carbeau coming through the bus stop now looking like they will finish P8. We'll say it once he actually finishes the line just because if anything could happen. P8 for Carbo, Anastasi, P9, and then Krochik for P10. I would say, like you said, Krochik would be my driver of the day for sure. Oh, yeah. Running up that top 10. Lee followed by Moffat, Moffat by Lee Williams. And Williams coming across. That was a close battle. Sadre coming across for P14. Allen, P15 for the number 15 driver. <laughs> All right. Rebel. Light. As everyone keeps coming across, I'm doing some math. I'm going to get you a total on how many Ferraris and total cars we had to have an incident today at Overish. Jack Poliak able to hold off Nate Roger there at the last bus stop for Kane. Yeah, the Poliak 20, Roger 21st. And then Alexander and Gino, who survived the war of attrition for a lot of that race, moving up a lot of spots there actually. And then Nico yeah. coming out to finish off with 24th for us. And we got some people doing doughies. <laughs> but our oh. podium today, Saldivia Simmons Mitchell. Gold winner, Simmons, silver winner, Saldivia. Yeah, I'm going to at them in the Discord and try to get them up in the booth. All right, uh, I will do uh, Krochik. Krochik. Um, all right, I have got the math done. Take a guess at how many people we had, unfortunately, die at the top how many i i think it's like 10 for just d uh three uh for d3 alone i'm only doing us so there's oh it's 10 for just us um then total if d2 d did not change too much it should be 17 or 18 total okay so for our race it was 11. Jesus. Are you getting, are you adding Crowcheck? Yeah, I just did. Perfect. See if I can see them in the chat. Not seeing them populate up yet. But it wasn't, like you said, a good race overall. We had a lot of drivers die through Old Rouge and Radion. But lap one, they they made it all clean. All of them made it clean. I know Almost. Was... We jinxed no, it. No, no, no. I'm saying Sorry, turn no. one <laughs> and Eau Rouge of Eau Rouge and Radion. They all made it clean through. Oh, yes. So I know that uh, Duran was plotting for that. So. So far, I'm not seeing our own uh, finishers. Saldivia says he is available for one if uh, we just need to get him into a voice channel. I got you, don't worry. Oh, you're the best. Working together. <laughs> I 
heard anything Simmons from Krochek yet. Well, Simmons up first. Sure, go for it. Simmons, what? our gold race winner for today. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the booth. Thanks, man. It was a uh, war of attrition, it felt like, for uh, O'Rouge and Radion today. Uh, we saw a lot of drivers dying in that uh, region of the track. Uh, how do you guys face it today? I mean, how do you feel about everything? Uh, it was it was kind of off and on as far as difficulty goes. If I was smoother there, it was just planted through the whole corner. But if I turned just a little too much, I, it kind of felt like I was floating. But I was able to catch it a few times and not go into the wall. That's always Which good. Which is That's good. good. <laughs> you want to have in a race, especially when you end up taking home the gold division winner uh, for this race. Oh, yeah. We got some amazing views of uh, people going up the top of Eau Rouge and Radion. I'm sure you were in there at some point. Um, you'll have to try and see yourself if you watch the stream back. But um, there was quite a few Ferraris that did not get to catch it like you did. So. <laughs> It was definitely a very interesting race for everyone uh, watching, and I'm sure you in the car as well, just to see the amount of people that kept getting unfortunate incidents at the top of those two corners. Yeah, it was pretty fun, honestly. The car felt really good throughout the entire lap. The only scary bit was uh, Eau Rouge, and what's what's the uh, corner before the bus stop? I should know that, but I don't. Um, launch them off? Yeah, that, through that corner, again, if I turned just a little bit too much, it would get a little hairy on the rear end. But that was more so of a case of keeping the steering where it was rather than trying to catch it. All right. well, you had a good race, though, today. Um, I think it was P2 overall. I know you passed Funk uh, in the middle of there and were trying to catch down the race winner of Saldivia. What was going through your mind throughout that? Uh, a battle that you had with them? Uh, honestly, I was trying to decide if I wanted to go for it or if I wanted to save my tires. But me tire saving, or rather the pace that I was tire saving at, I ended up being quicker than them. So I was like, eh, let's just go for it. It was a solid race to, uh, and solid move that you had. I, I unfortunately missed it in the broadcast. So it's hard to say well, that, but I know that you would have made the move a stick and stay ahead and i know you were trying to chase down the leader there and looks like you did put a good dent in it but unfortunately the leader found the pace again honestly to be honest uh i wasn't really trying to catch up to the lever i was trying to uh keep a gap to funk <laughs> he was very quick isn't he Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know do what you need to do to make the podium yeah and... i did not think i was going to catch the leader I did, no, I, I just don't have the pace for that. Not around here. Which is also kind of scary, because Spa is one of my better tracks. You'll have to prove it again next week, though, with uh, Wet Watkins Glen that you have the pace. Yeah, that should be fun. I'm actually quite good in the wet. Good to hear, and uh, I'm sure you'll have fun with that one. Absolutely, I love the rain. Uh, any all closing right, remarks you have for all the viewers? Uh, yes, please make Watkins Glen flooded. <laughs> we we don't do that. Wow. <laughs> we just have it. Well, it's going to be fun. Yeah. I've done <laughs> no, that before. That'll, be, that'll somehow be even more dead than <laughs> <O> Rouge. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. Oh, my. <laughs> this is dangerous territory we're in. <laughs> it is. But Max. Dangerous makes it fun. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Overall, good race. Glad to have you up here. We'll bring you back to uh, the D3 race review for you. And hopefully we see you up here again later on this season. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank have you. a good night. You too. Let's bring up uh, Christian, our overall race winner. Hopefully we can get things going with him. All right. Uh, welcome to the booth, Christian. Hey. Thank you. Congrats on your overall win. Um, is that your first one in SRA as well? Yep, it was. You uh, it was very, my first my first one here at this. A very dominant win too. Uh, I believe it was about ten seconds. 
to the P2, and then you also capped it off by taking pole, so you kept the lead the entire race. How was that I for you? I got the fastest lap. That too. Uh, yeah, I think I was talking to, to another driver here. Uh, I think it's my pretty strong track, I honestly, because uh, on the quality, I, I managed to do a 17.2, that it was pretty, pretty fast. And I guess what gave me the, the win was the consistency on the pace, which was pretty strong too. And yeah, but I, I, I think I could not manage to, to do or, or, or keep that display at, at the other tracks. So I guess it will be only at, at Spa. We would obviously love to have you back up in the booth with us and future races too. But I know that John probably has some other questions for you right now. Uh, I have one going up the top of Eau Rouge and Radion. Did you ever feel um, unstable at any point? Did you almost almost bend it at any point? Because we saw a lot of Ferraris, unfortunately, doing that today. Um, at all. Like the first half of the race was pretty calm. We mm-hmm. rushed had flat, but before the first half it, it was pretty pretty painful so i had to leave a little bit to not to win so yeah well it's good that it wasn't uh too bad for you at any point during the race that's always what you like to see especially on a weekend where you are absolutely dominating um i'm sure that you are feeling awesome um especially about going into next week at the Glen as well it's going to be a little bit wet but um we'll see if you can keep the this amazing pace up i hope so i i never raced before at Golden Lake, so i have to practice a lot so hope to keep a good pace well we hope to see you have a good race next week uh do you have any uh closing remarks for all the viewers um Nothing special. Uh, nothing special, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats again on your first win in SRA. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your first season here as well, right? Yeah, it is. First season and first win. That is awesome. Good on you, man. And okay. we'll see you again, as uh, Austin has said later this this season. I hope so. I just raced before on endurance races and. Yeah, this is on this is on I wanted to to race with some sick drivers here. <laughs> so yeah. Came to the right place, that's for sure. <laughs> cool. Well we'll move you back down to the D three race track and uh, have a great night. You guys too. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring up last okay. interview of the day is a rubber chicken award. Bring them up. Welcome, Alex, to the booth. The Rubber Chicken Award of the day. Hello, gentlemen. I believe you got Rubber Chicken at some point last season, didn't you? I um, I I was interviewed um, I guess two seasons ago, but uh, I don't. So I don't think I got Rubber Chicken last season. Ah, uh, okay. I couldn't remember. I remember seeing your name at some point, but it must have been uh, season five. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah, um, you did great today. You made up, I believe it was, correct me if I'm wrong, Austin or Alex. I think it was 19 spots, something like that. Yeah, I don't remember uh, exactly where I qualified, but that was very disappointing. Um, so to squeeze out a top 10 uh, was pretty okay. good. Um, so, uh... Out yep. of the war of attrition of Eau Rouge and Radion for sure tonight. We saw a lot of uh, car <laughs> mishaps go on there. Yeah, I heard quite a few uh, yellow flag in Sector 1s, and I knew what that meant. And I um, believe... Sorry, go ahead. I interrupted you. <laughs> that's okay. I was going to say I had my own code brown that I, you know, only cost me like half a second. Uh, so pretty clean, mostly besides that. I believe we had 15 Ferraris total between D2 and D3 go off at Eau Rouge today. Oh, God. 
Did you have any non-Ferraris go off? Yes, we had two in this race, two Mercedes. I'm not sure if it was the same one twice, but uh, there were two Mercedes that went off at Eau Rouge. I think I saw Rebel. Uh, Rebel? No, no, no. I think, yes, because Molyneux was one of them. It does seem like the Ferrari is more of a handful than the other cars through Eau Rouge, so that was definitely one of the more frustrating, uh, the most frustrating corner in practicing for this race. <laughs> no doubt. Um I have a question for you. Yes. This has nothing to do with the race. It's just my last fun fact of the day. Do you want to know about the national waffle chain or the national chain waffle house? Um, I know a little bit already, but I'd love to know more. So the national chain waffle house sells 145 waffles per minute. And That's, since uh... opening about 60 years ago, they have sold 877 million waffles. That's quite a lot. I've been to Waffle, waffle House. Waffles. I've never gotten a waffle. I've been to Waffle House once. I got a waffle. It tasted like it was uh, microwaved, so I never went back. <laughs> and yet people keep buying them. I, like I know. It's the, crazy. Uh, 877 and counting. I like he's going to get the uh, Waffle House FEMA scale on the back <laughs> one. Oh, my. I No, I don't have that one. I'll talk to you about it after. <laughs> But Alex, though, it was well, a good race from you. You definitely made up a lot of positions and ended up in P10, which is a wonderful drive. I'm sure Gino will point it out uh, if he has another uh, Driver of the Week series this week. Cool. cool. Thank you, guys. It was fun. You have a great night, Alex. All right, you too. Thanks for the broadcast. Thank you. Well, that wraps up another wonderful week from SRA and from all these drivers who provided all the entertainment we had tonight. We just added that little bit of spice. John had a little bit of spice with a new camera angle this week. And Which they... I'm going to throw this out here really quick. This might end up backfiring, but if you liked that camera angle, um, let me know either in the chat or my DMS and I'll try and find some for the Glenn next week as well. See, but John, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to say? Don't ever eat at Waffle House. <laughs> that is my closing remark. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I want to thank all the sponsors that you see on the ticker above. I want to thank all of our partners and affiliates that we have throughout the league. And I want to thank all the viewers and then the admins as well for making all of this possible week in and week out. So again, thank you to everybody. We'll see you again next week for the wet glen in new york good night sra